Good morning, afternoon, evening, daytime, not legal advice. Please like, subscribe, share, comment. I do check all comments. Uh, today I'm going to do talk about GTII, and I have to be honest, I'm a little pissy today. So hopefully it won't come through, but it kind of will. You'll see why I'm pissy as we go through this. Um, this is not legal advice. This is about GTII. This is about the history and how we got to where we are today. Before we start, I have a few questions to ask or statements. Does a human voice sound like a bark to a dog? The Stanley Cup final will be, will be played this year between a morally bankrupt city built on corruption and Las Vegas. I knew this old couple that grew fruit trees together. They lived to the ripe old age. And last but not least, I called the incontinence hotline yesterday. They asked if I could hold. Anyway, I've been pushing people to explore the issue of getting rid of management of GTII. And uh, I've been getting or hearing from people asking questions about that. And even though I was trying to be discreet to not alert the other side about what is going on so they could hire competent counsel, get their monies together to defend their interest. Because of questions, I thought I'd, I'd go through this and kind of um, relate what took me to that position. And again, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. I'm just trying to explain to you my interests and why we are where we are. I've literally put Tens, I put tens, I'd say thousands, more than 10,000, sure, of my own dollars, and I'm not, certainly not rich, spent and hundreds and probably thousands of unpaid hours working on this stuff. My efforts are certainly not designed to personally enrich myself. And if you want to, I'd be happy to take a lie detector test to show I'm not being paid for this. And that's not my primary interest. You can ask those associated with MMTLP if they think I have shareholder interest at heart. I think you will find that, um, in general, they agree that I do. Um, where does this all come from? I'm trying to figure out, so why do I have an interest in helping what I perceive as the little guy? Um, I've always been tied to the small guy. My father now deceased, owned a small mom and, park, mom and pop market in the MacArthur Park area of Los Angeles. As an aside, it's right near Langer's Deli. And if you want a great pastrami sandwich on double baked bread, go to Langer's. That's not an advertisement. My parents, as you know, were Holocaust survivors. My mother, also deceased, spent all of her teenage years in death camps in Poland before being liberated at the end of the war from Auschwitz, minus most of her family and my father, the same picture. So in my family, uh, wealth was not the focus. Survival and interest in the little guy was more what drove me. Now let's move on to the, the facts. So I've spent my money in, and invested my time to assist in investors, many of which because they couldn't do it themselves. Being a lawyer, that gives me special access and special abilities that others don't have and, and they can't do. So for me, it was an, it's something that was fulfilling to try to help others who couldn't help themselves. Um, and we're working on that with MMTLP and still working on, on that. And I'm involved with MLP, MMTLP. I'll do a, a video on that later this weekend. I'm involved in an arbitration in that uh, on behalf of MMTLP shareholders. And in part, I wanted to illustrate, and I've talked about it, how the system itself is dysfunctional. So I've discussed at many points about defects in the arbitration system. We are close to a hearing and a trial on the arbitration. I've indicated my uh, uh, reservations about that, but also that there's appeals and other things that might come in. I've been told by Fidelity, I mean, within the past two days, 
that they're watching my videos because I talk about MMTLP and things like that. So hello, Fidelity and their representatives. Greetings. Hope you enjoy this one. Hope you can help us in this one. So that brought me to GTII. And then originally I got to GTII, GTII amongst many because of potential squeeze. And I knew or thought there was a concentrated short position. And I knew that many others were told that and believed that. And that was what brought them into GTII. But my view is, okay, that's possible. But we don't know when, where, or if. And if, and on the long, alongside that, if management, in my opinion, is ripping off the shareholders, then you just can't wait and not do anything. And in my opinion, it's all opinion, that's what was happening in GTII. So I first looked at the squeeze potential, and I still own the stock, obviously. I started to follow Al Alpine. I've done a bunch of videos on Alpine and the status of that, and just quick update about that. So we're waiting for the opinion of the appellate court in D.C. as to the expedited expulsion and in Utah on the NSCC, DTCC matter where they're trying to exclude them from the system. There is a ongoing appellate, appellate process that's ongoing, but also there is an issue about a stay. There's no stay now, but I think a stay will happen if there's no stay, perhaps on the 26th Alpine would cease to be um, permitted to use that uh, settlement system, but I'm expecting that not to occur, that there will be an extension, and there, it probably will be another six to 12 months at a minimum before Alpine is really kicked out. Now, if a squeeze, if there is going to be a squeeze, and if there is a squeeze caused by Alpine, perhaps it could happen before the end, but we don't know. But anyway, so that's where it is. So there's no end currently to the Alpine scenario. There could be. But there's no end uh, in the current time. And people thought if Alpine was done, then that could cause a squeeze. I don't know about that, but that's kind of the picture. I kind of shifted away from that when I saw the way the operations of DTII were going. So I don't believe you can predict the squeeze or when it occurs. And then a bunch of people reached out to me various people talking to me about GTII and their dealings with GTII, their attempts to deal with David Reichman, and they outlined their difficulties in dealing with him and about nothing getting done. And I started to investigate GTII as a result, which ult ultimately led me to the SEC and the FBI, et cetera. What did I find out? Or what, what occurred to me? What, what happened? Because uh, a lot of people believe that GTII was acting in the best interests of shareholders up to a point. And then it appears that something changed. And I don't know if that was age, if Mr. Reichman now is too old or he has a, a disease or he thinks he does not long for the world or he's hiding something. I do not know. But it clearly appeared that in 2023, things changed. And I just look at the 10K to, um, to garner that. 10K is the annual report that was filed. And if you recall, because I did videos about that, I engaged with uh, GTI management. They weren't very responsive. Then an attorney got involved, Mr. Fattel. I think I've had a, a, a discussion or communication with Mr. Markowitz. And March 3rd of 2024, I got a, a letter from Mr. Fattel, who said he was representing GTII. And he indicated that uh, despite my concerns about management not doing anything, that management was doing everything to uh, increase shareholder value, was working on acquisitions, et cetera. And that they knew that completion, this is what it says, it, it is the best interest of all shareholder, shareholders that G GTII completes a fruitful transaction. Then what it says, this is March 3rd of 2024. And if you've heard any update about this or... If you've heard about who this is or about information about what's going to happen, then please let me know. But this is the last paragraph. Furthermore, GTII is working, to, work, working towards closing its outstanding acquisition target as soon as possible. As you can understand, the acquisition target is a separate entity not yet controlled by GTI. 
We ask that you await GTII's upcoming 10K annual report for important details that will be made available to all shareholders. So now we are almost in June. I've not heard anything further. I've not, in, I've not heard anything about an acquisition target, nor have I heard anything about GTII suing any company that was supposed to do an acquisition. So they're not enforcing anything and they haven't closed anything. The 10K certainly doesn't update us as to an acquisition. And there is no evidence of any acquisition. So I find the content of this letter false, in my opinion, or else it may have been true, but nothing has happened that is consistent with this letter. So I had plenty of dealings with this gentleman and with GTI man and management up to up, up till today. I think the last time they had any communication with me was March 18th. Not, not heard a word from them since then. And I've reached out to them probably multiple dozen times since then. So we got to, and they also indicated that 10K was going to be timely filed. It wasn't timely filed, but a couple of days later, they asked for an extension. What they then did is they filed a 10K late. I think it was April 16th. I reviewed it. I asked, and I would suggest everybody else review the 10K and compare 2023 to 2022. So what happened in 2023 to apparently change the uh, direction or beliefs of management of GTII? And you'll look at 2022 and 2023. Both years, zero revenue. As far as I know, 2024, nobody's told me otherwise, zero revenue. So what are they doing? And why was I disturbed by the 10K? I was disturbed by the 10K that was filed late, that didn't show about what Mr. Fattel had indicated was going to show about an upcoming acquisition, not aware of any acquisition. Nobody's told me about an acquisition. But in the 10K, I noticed, and these are some of the things that stood out, you can look at it and draw your own conclusion. But there were large amounts of cash that disappeared. It looks like $4 million in cash compared to 2022 disappeared. I have no idea where it went, but it disappeared. There was a huge, and I put huge in quotation marks, a huge amount of shares that were distributed to directors purportedly for past activities. Uh, I don't know what those activities were. And there was approximately 60 million shares in 2023 that were distributed to insiders. Losses, so the losses of GTII in 2023 compared to 2022, zero revenue in both years, increased more than 600%. Shares were given to foundations, seemingly owned and controlled by insiders. Again, no revenue. Then they got involved with their council, and as you know, was promised the 10K by a certain date, didn't happen. Facts showing consummation of an acquisition didn't happen. And none have been forthcoming to this date. Then we have the insider transactions that are referenced in the May 3rd, 2023 note. It doesn't reference what kind of insider transactions, just says that basically, and it was hidden after the um, dividend was issued April 23rd, which is also done improperly, apparently but it referenced kind of in a disguised fashion that they've been downlisted. Didn't indicate any details, didn't reference why, still hasn't referenced why, still has, hasn't disclosed why, but what I've been told is it involves some kind of familial transaction so that shares or the proceeds of shares were given to family members who were then able to buy property in Marin County in 2021. I have not seen that disclosed anywhere, nor have I disclo seen disclosed in any of the financial documents that GTI I had, all the litigation that apparently they've been involved with in the past. I don't know why that's not been disclosed, but that's what apparently is another defect. So no, no disclosure or clarity about what happened in 2021 to get a down listing from a mid OTC level to the pink sheet level, which deprives GTII of potential capital sources and of interest by suitors. Then we have the auditor chosen by the CEO. So David Reichman is the CEO and was the CEO of GTI. 
I believe he's over 80, and other board members are approaching that age. So David Reichman, who was an expert in tax, ran a tax practice, is the CEO, CFO, and chief accounting officer in March of 2023, hired Borgers as their auditor. Their prior auditor left in January. I don't know if they left because of the downlisting and of the transactions that the OTC indicated were rep repeated. And I don't think any of those were disclosed to shareholders. But the auditor left. They hired Borgers. Now, Borgers is a shill outfit. How do I know it's shill and a scam outfit? Because they were closed down by the SEC this month. And they were alleged, they agreed to shut down, agreed to a $12 million fine. And the allegations were they were just copying nonsense, falsifying documents, et cetera. Now, this was the auditor chosen by the chief accounting officer, CEO, and chief finan financial officer. So, and this company, with his assistance, prepared both the 2022 and 2023 financials. So the CEO, chief accounting officer, hired an auditor who are, are obviously a fraud squad, and he had the knowledge and probably made the choice to hire them. He didn't fire them until after they got banished by the SEC. There's no notes in the 10K explaining the distinction between what's in 2022 and the 2023 financials, both prepared by Borgers. There's a the huge loss, the cash, the cash where it went, the distributions to directors, et cetera. None of that is noted and should have been in the 2023 financials that differed dramatically from the 2022. They, ironically, they chose a new auditor. Fortune was the name of the new auditor. I checked and they've been around since all of 2022, 2020, late 2020. It appeared they had three clients in this, who were public companies. Uh, it, it looked like three, I was, I was reviewing them. And a gentleman by name of Curtis, who's a uh, MMTLP, MMTLP person, well-respected in that uh, area, along with others, I think, determined when they looked at the client listing of, of this new auditing firm chosen by David Reichman, the CAO, who also chose the Borgers firm, it appeared that one of their clients, and it looked like, I don't remember the exact uh ticker symbol, something like BTCH, something like that, that it had the same QCIP number as Torchlight. So it's it repeated a QCIP number that Torchlight used. Torchlight was the predecessor to MMAT, which became MMTLP. So pretty bizarre that this auditor with limited business chosen by the CEO who had chosen a shill auditing company scammers before has this connection with a reused QCIP number didn't make a lot of sense. On top of that, between 2022 and 2023, and it affects all shareholders, there was dilution of 45% in one year. So it went from something on the order, and I'm guesstimating, 260 million shares 2022, 370 million shares, 2023. And that's relevant, as you will see. So I might have gotten in for the squeeze, but I'm not going to let some old man who has decided that he's had enough seemingly rip everyone off. And that's just my opinion. That's what it looks like to me. And on top of that, understand that these officers and directors are further pressing the stock price down. How are they doing that? They're selling per plan approximately 90,000 shares per month. They could also sell their other shares. There's nothing stopping them that. What would the effect be if they sold their 
tens of millions of shares that would have huge downward pressure on GTII. It would harm shareholders and there's nothing at the current time preventing those officers and directors, I don't believe we're operating in good faith from doing that. And again, can't tolerate that, will not tolerate that. Uh, I will I will seek satisfaction, whether we get it this way or otherwise, but I'm not going to let it go on. Uh, it's it's public. We just can't we can't let management be part of the problem. We have enough problems with hedge funds, brokers, shorts, regulators that management can't be part of that additional problem. So I also looked at GTI's current website. It too, imagine that. It too seemingly contains false and inaccurate inf information. It, it not only falsely references Trento Resource as a project in development, but references Classroom Salon and Gold indus Industries as part of their portfolio. If they, if they exist, they haven't produced or are producing zero revenue. And in the recent 10K, I believe, the gold investment was completely written off. So the website contains inaccurate information also that may have been relied upon by share, shareholders. So I decided after all this, enough is enough. We got to get to the end before this company is completely done. So I filed an action in California, but jurisdictionally I could not go against, I could only against, go against David Reichman because he apparently lives at the Beverly Hills Hotel driving a Bentley, um, and but could not go against GTII directly. So I started exploring ways of getting rid of the board because the board has to go along with all management. They are a enemy of shareholders. That is what led us today. So I've tried to be somewhat discreet in getting management out. I didn't want to tip off GTII about what is coming up. I didn't want to give them the opportunity again to further dilute or steal or misappropriate money from GTII or gather money for legal fees or prepare for what is coming. And I try to do that discreetly. Um, I didn't want to give them, the, give them the opportunity to hire real counsel more than what they have as of today. I didn't want to give them the opportunity to raise money to provide them the source of payment of legal fees, which also ultimately brings us today in the questions. And I've gotten questions from other people about people asking about what we're doing, what's going on, uh, asking about a gentleman named Paul, et cetera. So I figured I would address that after I kind of explained why my interest lies where it lies. So I did locate an attorney, and I, I'm trying to be, again, as discreet as I can. I look at an attorney who had prior involvement with Reichman that appeared successful. With that attorney, and I found somebody else, as it turned out, who would fund the litigation. Uh, no shareholder, anybody participating has to fund the litigation. But I found somebody else or was put in contact with somebody else who also was interested in getting rid of the board, getting rid of management so things could move forward. And that's what interested me in, in moving forward. So as a result, I kind of reached out and eventually I spoke to an attorney and that attorney was chosen as the counsel to move forward against GTII. And that counsel had prior experience dealing successfully with Mr. Reichman in terms of from a shareholder perspective. So as, as such, that interested me. Spoke with him, found out, had a few conversations, and, and I'm still in contact with him. And to the extent this goes forward, I will be intimately involved with him on a day-to-day -day basis We'll find out what's going on, report to shareholders, and we'll be involved and in providing uh, not only information, but providing back to shareholders so they understand what's going on. 
in that process, and we discussed multiple ways of pursuing, you could ha maybe have a proxy vote, you might put in uh, someone, replace someone in charge, various aspects. And we looked at it in terms of timing, cost, how long it would take. And we came upon a remedy that we thought would work best. Part of that remedy would require putting someone else in charge of the company. We haven't specifically decided which way. And to get to that point in time, we had to have enough shareholder interest. Now, two reasons. One, because to a court, the more shareholders that are, that are interested, the more likely a court is going to be interested in our position. And two, we needed a certain amount of shares relative to the total amount of shares to be able to assert that position. And you remember I said that between 2022 and 2023, management diluted a GTII from two, 260 million to approximately 30, 370 million. That made this job of getting enough shares more difficult. But that's what my my um, all my messages are and what the shareholder interest is. That's what's being discussed because we need enough shareholders. We need enough shares. Now, I know some, because people have asked, who's Paul? So Paul, the gentleman Paul, who you may have had contact with, is an associate uh, of the attorney who will be moving forward in this matter. I think Paul has prior experience, my understanding is a CEO and other particular attributes. If in fact we are successful and we're able to gain control over GTII, that would involve a court process. And in the court process, whoever is temporarily, and it would only be temporary, in charge would, would be subject to court approval and all actions would be have to be signed off by the court. To, so to the extent, I'm just going to say Paul. Let's say Paul is running GTII. Whatever he wanted to do of a material basis, he'd have to get approved by the court. So he can't act unbridled and there would be a bond covering him or her. So my concern about him is limited because I don't know if he will be the one who will be acting on behalf of GTII. I know it will be temporary. I know a court has to approve him, so we'd have to have the proper qualifications and skills. I know the attorney bringing the matter on behalf of GTI would have to select him, and I know that all of his actions would have to be signed off by the court. So whether it's Paul or whoever, one, I'll be closely monitoring them. Two, the court will be closely monitoring them. And therefore, I have no real concern about who it is. They will be followed and scrutinized. And they'll be temporary. And then there was an issue that came up about a, a um, that there would be a hold on shares. There would be a temporary hold on shares, like a restriction. I don't know how clearly that was communicated, but there's no restriction wrote, written on your share certificates. What it is is that there are particular statutes that require a certain percentage of shareholders be involved. And per those statutes, while the action is ongoing, there is a informal lockup. Now, when I refer to action, I'm not talking about the entire case because the entire case, besides getting rid of management, might involve also going after management shares, monies, et cetera. So the way the statute reads as I see it and as counsel in my discussions with counsel who will be involved is that lockup is only while the person who is going to be taking over temporarily that process. So whatever that process is, a name is given to the court, there'll be some argument and then a decision. That's the lockup period per the statute. It doesn't go for the entire case. It's not beyond that. It only is at, per the statute while the 
application for a replacement is decided. So I expect that to be a relatively short period of time. How long? I don't know. I've been involved in similar situations where that process took 90 days or less. And I would not be surprised if that's similar to what we incur in this point. So theoretically, you'd have a lockup for 90 days or whatever the time period is. And upon completion of that step, there would be no lockup per the statute. So that's hopefully that answers the questions about people concerned about the lockup. I know that's, that maybe perhaps people got information related to six months or they thought during the case, but statutorily, it's only while that process is in going on. And again, I pledge my own shares and others are pledging their shares. So that's the lockup period, not for the entire case and only until a particular process is resolved. And that process would start from day one of the case. So it wouldn't be a case is filed, time went on, then this particular procedure had to go forward. No, the way this will happen is this process will start from day one when the complaint is filed and probably the completion of that process will happen within 90 days. I'm, I'm, I'm estimating 90 days. I don't expect it to be substantially longer. Anything can happen, of course, not legal advice, but that's the way I see it. And that's my expectation. So after that, after the temporary person is, there may be a permanent person that's put in. That will not be up to the lawyer. That will be up to the court. And there'll be, I'm sure there's plenty of people interested I know somebody has reached out to me, separate and apart from Paul, for example, and there may be others, and they will put their their uh, their foot in the ringer about wanting to be involved. So coming down to the end, so you can do nothing. You don't have to join the cause. You can let GTI squeeze from three cents to nine cents, or you or you can be actively involved in the solution. I will be involved in all aspects of the litigation. will be an agent and reporter for retail. Join me to get control over our lives and future or don't, whatever it be. If you think a short squeeze is going to happen, maybe, but you don't know when and you don't know the amount. And like I said, it could be from three cents to nine cents. It's a 300% move. That's even at a less, a, a, a lower value than today. So you can be part of the, the problem or part of the solution, however it goes. I think I've related enough details, and if you re review my prior videos, there's enough information to suggest that this particular group of management is not doing us shareholders, us shareholders anything positive and, in fact, is further selling off shares and suppressing the stock price. As a result... Please join me. Contact me. You have my email. Please reach out. And I will, from here, because it's going to happen anyway, we will be moving forward when we have the sufficient numbers. And I will prize you of that now, since it's kind of in a semi public way. I'll prize you of that. I'll be involved. I'll keep you apprised. Hopefully, we'll get rid of management. Hopefully, we'll get new management. Hopefully, we will get a bunch of deals. Again, I still hear interest because of the the shareholder base you and because of the concentrated short position apparently but there is an interest and hopefully that will come to fruition i hope that i know it's a long long ass video i hope that describes where we are and how we got here today and i hope it describes the issues if you have comments or questions please put them in the in the video when you look at it, comment, and I will try to respond to the extent I can. And we'd love you to join us. Love to have you as part of the, the group that's pursuing, I think, a righteous position. Anyway, have a great day. Have a great weekend. Be well. Take care. And we'll